move on to our next incredible speaker. It's Tia from Visium with Simon Gosling, ex Big Stack actually from Quiet Mark. And they're going to be talking about sound advice for the home of the future. So over to you two. Hi there. Hello, everyone. Um, so um, I will um, uh, skip introductions. As you can see, our name's there. So I'm Jack Asanya from Visium, and Simon will be speaking after me. We're bringing you some sound advice for the home of the future as the home has become the center not only of our lives, but also of marketing and communication. Now, if we go back pre-pandemic time, the UN had estimated that by 2050, two thirds of the global population will be living in mega cities. Now, if we see what's happened now, cities have become the epicenter of virus and restrictions. We need to rethink the appeal of mega cities also because people are realizing that living in the countryside actually does not, um, for many people, does not uh, impact negatively on their career. They also have close contact to nature, uh, which we'll hear later from Simon has got great uh, effects. And also um, they can, they have more freedom. So that has been rethought um, at the moment. And we know that that trend is here to stay because more and more people are buying property in the countryside. What we don't know if it's here to stay is actually whether the environmental change, the positive environmental change that we've seen and this image um, here from India is quite iconic was incredibly visible during the just the first few weeks of lockdown so we know there is a visible evidence of the change that we can make is this here to stay and i've highlighted the word visible there because simon is going to talk about also some less visible changes in the environment that are just equally important um, and i thought they are um, extremely um, relevant for us to discuss um, in this document so um, for those people that cannot move to the countryside cities are bringing the countryside to the city. And we've seen some major architects uh, working on um, vertical forests and covering, you know, so bringing the biodiversity of nature to the city, uh, but also on the streets that we live on. This is a, a projection of a, a normal city in London, what it looks like today, what it could be looking like, you know, post-pandemic, less cars, less metal, which of course looks better, feels better and sounds better. Um, and so this is perhaps where we're moving to with our cities, not only on macro architect architecture level, but also around our own uh, homes. And now from that macro level, we're moving into the home. Now, quieter streets actually do not mean uh, quieter um, homes and actually the opposite. We have seen an increased um, amount of noise within our homes which are really impacting on the privacy that we feel that we experience in the home. Just before pre-pandemic, IKEA had done a study on the privacy uh, in the home. And although the majority, great majority of people said that privacy was very important for them in the home, one in four felt they didn't get enough privacy in the home. If we ask that question now, that stat will probably be much worse. It'll be closer, three, probably everyone will say they don't get enough privacy in the home, apart from people that are actually suffering from solitude in this period. So that issue of privacy comes in not only from the noise uh, of other people that we're sharing with, but also having to work in this space. And not all of us have the possibility of building a polymorph space around us where actually the space can function around everything that we need to do in the home, exercising, entertaining, looking after children, working. Um, so we have a number of um, uh, a number of things that we're doing in this restricted space, but also voices that are coming to us from all sides. Human voices, as we said before, we need to co-live um, more with people in the home working and you know, uh, educating themselves and so on. Digital voices that are coming at us uh, through the screens, not only work, you know, colleagues, but also talking to family and extended family uh, more often via Zoom, but automated voices. So the internet of things has really had a party uh, during, this, um, dur during this pandemic. And those automated voices have increased and definitely are, are here to stay as we use more and more speakers and other connected items in the home. Now, within this noisier environment in the home, people, consumers are choosing brands that um, really have a positive impact on wellness. These curtains you see here are curtains that actually purify the air. So instead of having a bulky, ugly, noisy um, machinery that does that for you, having beautiful curtains that actually have a dual um, role there. And we see this with many, many items coming to, to the forefront. 
And on a final closing note, before I hand over to Simon, so items really need to earn a place in the home. Not only they need to look good, they need to sound good, they need to feel good, but also consumers want to know where they're coming from, how are we going to dispose of them, where are they going to end after we dispose of them. So really everything needs to earn a place in the crowded, the crowded, noisier home. And with that, handing over uh, to Simon, Simon, we're going to show a little video here. Lovely. That's the one. Okay. Now cross court deep. Now you can take it back further. Separate. There we go. You see the sound? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you see, your strings tell you what you've yeah, done. Yeah, so yeah. You, when you play snooker, you must yeah. hear the cue, the way the cue comes yeah, into the ball. You know exactly yeah. what's going to happen. I always say play with sound. Yeah, exactly. I know if I'm hitting it, good. The sound sounds good. And them last three were like, solid. So there's Ronnie O'Sullivan having a tennis lesson from Greg, Greg Detsky. If you could press the button, um, the play button on the video at all, please, Tia. But Greg, uh, Ronnie O'Sullivan's saying, I always play with sound. When it, I, know it, I know it's going to go in the pocket because it sounds right. Sound is such an integral part of our being. And during lockdown, the noise in the world fell by 50%. The uh, video on the right shows noise levels dropping. There's a timeline going on here. This is now February 2020. And the volume of the world decreased by 50% globally uh, as a wave of silence spread across the world. And the three key causes of sound are air travel, uh, road travel, and construction and industry. And something that Quiet Mark is asking as a company is, if, the, if sound has gone from 10 to 5, does sound have to return to 10 post-pandemic, or can we keep control of the sound levels? With air travel, people are Zooming, as we are here. With road travel, people are working from home. They're not commuting so much, so road travel's down. And Quiet Mark, the company I work with, which is a consumer champion for Quiet, uh, people recognize our purple Q logo on products when they buy quiet products. Um, we're looking at how to also quieten down construction. Uh, next slide, slide, slide please, uh, Tim. Um, and interestingly, when the world became quieter at the beginning of the pandemic, and also the skies got bluer, it was March the 23rd, and the sun came out in many, many places. And one of the, th the things that we saw in many newspaper reports was that it was nature was an antidote to our modern ills. Um, there was a real, we had this real reconnection with nature, and this has been something that's really helped alleviate our fears during this time. And there's some interesting notes here. It's saying that a National Trust reports that while 30% of eight to 11-year-olds cannot identify a magpie, 90% can identify a Dalek. I guess that's no surprise, really, but it does sort of put an emphasis on the fact that we spend too much time looking at devices, as the social dilemma tells us on Netflix right now, but we're also wearing earbuds when we go out. We're sometimes just not taking enough time to reconnect with nature. And if we do, and we listen to the sounds of nature, the wind in the grass, the, the waves on the sea, these things can really help calm us. Next slide, please, Tia. Thank you. And the World Health Organization had, uh, in 2018, done a study that showed that one million healthy life years are lost every year in Western European countries because of environmental noise, with cardiovascular disease contributing to the vast majority of deaths, especially high blood pressure, heart attacks, coronary disease. And it's thought that noise triggers a release of stress hormone, cortisol, which damages blood vessels over time. In the next slide, we see a pyramid, uh, which is in from a World Health Organization document that shows that at the bottom, the most of people affected, so feeling discomfort, feelings of discomfort from, from sound, but sound can lead all the way up to the top of the period where less people are affected, but nevertheless, those million life years are lost uh, due to sound. People really sometimes don't appreciate that noise pollution is a cause of death due to the stress that it causes people. Next slide, please, uh, Tia. Um, so at QuietMark, before I talk about this slide, I'd just like to say a quick bit about QuietMark. We have a lab that tests appliances with, from companies like Dyson, Philips, Miele. And when you see the purple Q of QuietMark, you know that you're buying the quietest products. We've now got, at the beginning of lockdown, there were 350 products on QuietMark.com. And if you go there now, there's now 750 products on QuietMark.com from 80 different brands. And also John Lewis, are one of our partners, so at Argos, and they're noticing a huge increase from people who are searching for products that are quiet. Quiet 
is the new loud, for want of a better phrase. And just on a, a final sort of note here, side sound can drive your purchase decisions. We talked about Ronnie O'Sullivan knowing when he's played a good snooker shot. Sound influences in so many ways. There was a study done a few years ago where French music was played in a wine shop. And when the French music was played, people bought French wine 77% of the time. When German music played, 73% of wine sold were German. So sound, even though people in that supermarket study said, I didn't even listen to the music, it's nevertheless influencing their purchase decision. In the final slide, uh, no, final couple of slides, these are some of the brands that we work with that I've already mentioned, but here's the final slide that talks about the Quiet Mark podcast. It's on Spotify, it's on Apple Podcasts. We're talking to acousticians, architects, designers about how sound impacts our lives. I urge you to tune in. There's me talking to one of my guests. Uh, thank you for listening to me today and thank you for this opportunity.